My name is Richard Hamilton. This is my oral presentation for services and strategies. My project is titled The Windrush Generation. Well, can I say to the Home Secretary that the relationship between this country and the West Indies and Caribbean is inextricable. The first British ships arrived in the Caribbean in 1623, and despite slavery, despite colonisation, 25,000 Caribbeans served in the First World War and Second World War alongside British troops. When my parents and their generation arrived in this country under the Nationality Act of 1948, they arrived here as British citizens. The purpose of this project is to capture the Windrush generation in candid conversations, to communicate their feelings regarding the current Windrush scandal, to discuss their experiences in moving to the UK, and to give them a platform to communicate to people who may otherwise not be aware of their struggles. My images are shot using a Canon 5D Mark IV, a Canon 7D, or a Mamiya C220. The apparatus matters much less in capturing and communicating how each of my subjects feels. Although I am trying to familiarise myself with shooting using film, uh, particularly because I'm thinking about exhibiting the work eventually and would like to enlarge. At present I'm thinking about presenting in either A0 or A1 when I do exhibit the work. On each fossil shoot I'll arrive to my subject's house for about 12 afternoon and remain on location until four or as long as I'm allowed to, we'll have a laid back conversation whereby I'll record using voice memos on my phone. I'll set my camera up on a tripod, connect an umbrella flash and use a wireless trigger to capture each of the images throughout our conversation. My hope is that although each of these images is a constructed portrait, they will remain as candid and natural as possible. This quote by Willem Flusser highlights the importance of documentary photography. It's not just about capturing information, it's about capturing memories, about recording information, events, people that may otherwise be forgotten. Ethnography is something that I've begun to look into throughout my work on this project. Coming from a Caribbean background myself, I believe that Caribbean culture is something that I'm extremely familiar with. I am constantly surrounded with Caribbean people, both from the Windrush generation. And this offers me certain benefits. It enables me to work in these environments with different subjects and in most circumstances for them to remain comfortable and confident and happy to expose things to me that they may not be as comfortable sharing with an outsider. Despite this, on a number of occasions, whilst networking and finding subjects for these projects, there have been problems with getting people to commit to inviting me into their home. There are instances of people cancelling photo shoots on the day or turning me away when I arrive at their home prepared to shoot. I believe that photography can be used as a vehicle for driving change. 
documentation of negative or positive events with text is powerful with imagery it's almost mind altering seeing a subject creates a different feel to reading about it as evidenced with the image of the Syrian child Gordon Parks is a perfect example of a photographer who used his imagery to drive social change. He captured images during the civil rights movement in America. He documented water fountains for coloured people, as they were referred to at the time in America. Coloured only entrances to restaurants the segregation that existed in America and highlighted how this was not justice, this was not right, this was not correct. His images were powerful, but they were also shot in a very matter of fact way. Due to the nature of each of my images, it's extremely difficult to capture the subjects in as candid a manner as I had hoped. Kitty, pictured of the Windrush generation, became extremely nervous when I took my camera out, set up my umbrella flash and set up my tripod. And I believe it shows in the images, whereas some of the subjects are very composed and relaxed Kitty didn't want to make eye contact. She engaged in conversation or whenever my stroll fired, she'd freeze, she'd pause, she'd comment. And this somewhat ruined the interaction that we had. I believe I was still able to capture images of a satisfactory standard but this is one of the challenges that documentary photographers who construct their portrait images face. The Sashi Project, Rob Hornstra and Arnold Van Bruggen have been working to tell the story of Sashi in Russia since 2007. The 2014 Winter Olympic Games held in Sochi were perhaps some of the most controversial Olympic Games of recent times. The contrast in Sochi between the extremely glamorous and 20 kilometres away the war-torn uh, embattled areas contradicted the ethos of the Olympic Games. The images document different people from the region, include a discussion of their experiences, and it's something that I found great inspiration from. The images in this project are digital. Each individual image is of no value. The subjects, the narrative and the collective, the images together, the story associated with the images, however, is of great value. I have considered different ways of exhibiting and capturing my work. I believe the disposability of digital photography decreases the value of individual images. However, your subject and the narrative that accompanies your subject can create a value of sorts.